just I think from my background growing up in a war, we started seeing the news in China and started getting prepared. We got uh, food reserves, you know, not a long time, but a couple of weeks we could be okay. We even bought an extra freezer. Well, the dates are an excellent idea. People cross the desert with a handful of dates. You can eat one or two for a whole day and have your calories. Past two weeks, I don't know what we will do. I, I don't think it's responsible to hoard for months and months. I see people doing that and they're just taken away from people who may have come late to the game and, and start thinking about this a little too late, didn't take it seriously at the beginning, and you don't want to take away from them. So ideally we can do it two week by two week at a time and stores will stay open and pharmacies will stay open, which is the plan so far we've here. So tell me, have you considered buying guns before? Yeah, I was considering it for sport shooting, but it wasn't a, nothing urgent. And uh, at some point I had one, but now we're thinking about it for home defense. You know, in case once people want but to come in and rob your garage, food right? and uh, supplies and because they didn't plan and, and uh, all sorts of crazy things can happen. Olivia Daniel, I need help, please. My grandma grew up for, uh, during World War II. She was a young girl, maybe like 18, during that time. And she told us stories how difficult it was at certain a point they didn't have anything to eat. Uh, she told me those scary stories where she had to go and dig in the trash and pull like potato peels and boil potato and peels and that's that, that was their dinner at one time. So um, it's scary. This situation um, made us think of um, the nearest future. What if you're stuck at home? Um, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do if, if the kids are hungry? How am I gonna feed them when I cannot get out of the house? This is good. We can keep this. And all the emergency feeling that you have around everything that's happening reminds me of four back in Lebanon. You know, we used to spend weeks in the shelter with bombs falling around us. There was no food. There was no running water. There was no electricity. People did uh, food runs in the middle of bombing. I mean, they would wait for the bombs to slow down a little bit and they would get in their car and go to the bakery or go to the supermarket. The bakery would open for a few hours. You go in, you get in line, you get some bread, you get some water. You have to go to the, to the reservoir locally and get some water and bring it back. If you could, were lucky enough to get some gas, you could go line up at the gas station, get gas, put it in a generator, if you were lucky enough to have a generator, and then you had light and maybe a little TV. So I think we're very lucky with the situation here. It's still not pleasant and it's still very important for people to stay isolated, yes. but uh, it's nothing compared to what we had during the war.